Today's video is sponsored by Team Group and their T-Force Vulkan SSD. The Vulkan SSD is a great choice for PC users who want to have a snappy experience with reduced loading times while keeping things subtle and RGB free. With the Vulkan SSD, the operating system and in-game loading times are reduced significantly compared to a traditional hard drive, increasing the amount of time you spend using your PC instead of waiting for things to load up. For those of you who prefer to have the rainbow effect rather than keeping things minimal, the T-Force Delta Series SSDs might be the right choice for you. To learn more about Team Group's SSD lineup, follow the link in the video description. Previously, we had a look at whether building a used PC with a 4th Gen i7 for just under $500 is worth it, though since we had a budget limitation, we had to use a GTX 760, which heavily held back our i7. In today's video, we're going to be using a much more powerful graphics card to see how capable this i7 is. As you know, this is a 4-core 8-thread processor that released all the way back in 2014, and back then it was priced a little over $300. Nowadays, you can find one for right around 60 bucks, which is fairly cheap, so let's dive in and have a look at whether this i7 is any good in modern games. For the system specs, we have an i7-4790, an MSI B85M gaming motherboard, 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory, an EVGA GTX 1070 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. Please keep in mind that since the processor as well as the motherboard are locked, we're only going to be looking at stock results. Also, while some games were tested using only low settings, most of them had been tested using both low and high graphics presets. Alright, let's kick things off with Battlefield 5, which the i7 handles without a problem. Using lowest settings at 1080p, we're mostly getting between 75 to 100 FPS depending on the intensity of the area, while the frame time stays pretty stable for the most part. Increasing the settings to high costs us about 5 to 10 FPS compared to low settings, which isn't enough of a drop to make the game unplayable. Next, we have Division 2, and there is not much to say here. The frame rate basically never dips below 90s unless you're in a demanding area or situation. Unfortunately, I didn't test this game using a higher preset, though I doubt that increasing the settings to medium or high would result in a big performance impact. Moving on we have Watch Dogs Legion, where the 4th gen i7 is starting to show signs of struggle, which shouldn't really be a surprise since Watch Dogs games have always been hard to run. Now, it's not like the game is completely unplayable. The frame rate tends to hover between 50 to 60 frames for the most part, yet there are moments when we get sudden dips down to mid-30s, which are absolutely impossible to ignore. Increasing the settings doesn't impact the frame rate all that much, so the experience is mostly identical when using low and high presets. Next on the list we have Apex Legends, which the i7-4790 is capable of handling without a hitch. 
Using lowest settings, the frame rate mostly tends to stay above 90 FPS, and even when it drops below that, it's for the most part because of the GPU. So if anything, the graphics card is what needs to be upgraded first here. I also decided to try using high settings, though unsurprisingly doing so results in a massive drop down to 60 FPS in some areas due to the GPU bottleneck. For our next game we have Need for Speed Heat, which is playable for the most part. Driving around the city we're getting between 70 to 90 FPS, though once we get in a race the frame rate drops noticeably, hovering between 55 to 65 FPS. Now the game is still playable at that frame rate, yet even at low settings there are moments when it suddenly dips below 45 frames in certain situations. Thankfully these dips are not all that frequent, though I'd still recommend not going beyond medium settings if you want to have a somewhat stable experience. Next on our list we have Control, which the Haswell i7 has no issues running. In fact, we're heavily GPU bound here even at low settings, meaning that upgrading the graphics card is what needs to be done to achieve a higher frame rate. Next we have Star Wars Fallen Order, where the i7-4790 is also capable of delivering a playable experience. There are areas where the frame rate can drop below 60s and frame time spikes do occur here and there, though for the most part the game runs just fine, both at low and epic graphics presets. For our last game we have PUBG, and here the i7 also performs pretty good. There are instances when you get drops below 75 FPS in detailed areas, but overall the game is more than playable. Looking at temps we can see that the CPU does get quite hot, and while the cooler that I used isn't the original cooler that came in the box with the CPU, I highly doubt it would make much of a difference, so spending at least $20-$30 to $30 on an aftermarket tower cooler is definitely necessary if you're thinking of getting this processor. When it comes to the total system power consumption, it doesn't exceed 300 watts for the most part, meaning that a 400 watt power supply will be enough for a such build. In conclusion, I think that this is still a very capable processor that I'd be totally fine with using in my personal rig, even if it is starting to show its age in some modern titles. Thanks to its 8 threads, there are no major stutters that I've experienced in any of these titles, and there is also enough headroom to have things open in the background, since the CPU never maxes out in basically any of these games. One exception is Battlefield 5, where it does get fully utilized from time to time, though since it's not constantly pegged at 100%, it's not that big of a deal. It really is unfortunate that I couldn't overclock this rig because of the locked processor and the chipset. I really wish I had unlocked parts to push the system even further, cause there is plenty of performance being left on the table. But for now, this is what we got. In our next video we'll be comparing this i7-4790 to the Ryzen 5 2600, so if you're interested make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Anyways, that's been it. If you found this video interesting, you know what to do, and feel free to support my work by using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.